So our first community election conversation took us to the southwest corner of Macomb County in the city of Warren, which is the third largest city in the state. Macomb County is pretty interesting. Voters elected Barack Obama twice, but then went for President Trump in 2016. It's historically home of the Reagan Democrats, but there is so much more to this county. We went to the Dovetail Coffee Shop, which is a place where a lot of community gatherings and political conversations happen. And we put out the invitation for people to come to the Dovetail, and the League of Women Voters also put out an invitation for people to join us. So keep that in mind when you listen to the conversation. For over an hour, myself, Nolan Finley from the Detroit News, and Jerome Vaughn from WDET Radio asked questions and moderated the conversation. And while this one room by no means shows what Macomb County is all about, it was a very interesting start. People feel like the country is leaving them behind. There's change that's happening in this country. Macomb County has been resistant to that change. We've lost our youth. They've moved away. I don't know that you can look at a candidate for president who comes in and tells you their platform really speaks to the fact that you don't know if you're going to have money to retire, if you're going to be able to pay your health care bills, if you can pay your taxes. The Dovetail Coffee Shop, South Macomb County, Warren, Michigan, on Detroit's northern border, and the third largest city in the state, an area that's becoming more diverse. It's like I've lived here for 60 some years and it's just I guess you really don't see it change until you realize things are really different you know Gerald DeMare worked in a local grade school program and over the years it's like holy cow at first they were all just white kids and now you got kids of every background and every ethnic thing in the schools so I hold there's a big change right there you know we had an open call for our one Detroit gathering led by Nolan Finley, WDET's Jerome Vaughn, and me. Who turned out? Most here lean Democratic. What are the perceptions of, of Macomb County? What do you think? Yeah. Blue collar. Okay. What else? What else are people saying? Yeah. Socially conservative. Socially conservative. Okay. In Macomb, M59, Hull Road, separates the south and north, a clear distinction to the people here. When you get north of Hall Road, it is much more solidly Republican than the south part of the county. So we kind of, I think one of the things people look at is there is a divide. A divide that's grown as ex-burbs boomed up north in the 40 years since Reagan first won this county, then known for its Reagan Democrats people who split their tickets, keeping their local Democratic favorites in office. I think Reagan Democrats have become Trump Republicans. At this point, they have fully switched over to the Republican Party. Um, but what we've seen is that some Even of them, in local elections? I think so. I think that's why you saw in 2016 some of these seats flip, right? We had a treasurer candidate who won who didn't campaign. In Mount Clemens, Macomb County Treasurer Lawrence Rolka and now deposed Macomb County Clerk Karen Spranger replaced Democrats as Donald Trump took over in Washington. Local Democratic Party leader Jeremy Fisher sees the once Reagan Democrats as full GOP now. They flipped. They're Trump Republicans. They voted straight Republican. And that's why we lost those seats to people that didn't campaign. Traditionally Democratic, overwhelmingly white, blue collar, but the media fascination returns next year because this county that helped elect Obama two times before flipping for Trump. Does that bother you getting all that attention from the national media? A and B, do you feel like they're getting it right? It doesn't bother me. I, th I think scrutiny is usually a good thing. Uh, but what does bother me is that they seem to place an undue importance on what goes on here as if as if there is some uh, magical answer that's going to happen here in Macomb County. These media outlets come and interview like three white people in a diner and they think that that encapsulates the entire county and that's not the case. I would say like 50-50 we voted for Trump, but because of our county's history, right, like Reagan Democrats in 1980, we've been sort of wishy-washy and a lot of that has to do with like economic inequality getting worse and people feeling like they need a change either way. We heard about health care costs, student loan debt, 
taxes, and of course, the economy. Macomb, still known for auto production. The GM Tech Center is still here, although the GM's transmission plant shut down. And while recent government statistics showed a more than 9,000 gain in production jobs countywide, a bump that leads the nation, Warren resident Lori Arts said it's still not good in the South End, citing eviction statistics among the highest in the nation. Who is it that you think is responsible for that, for things being worse than 10 years ago? Who do you hold responsible? All of our elected officials, starting at mayor, our county executive just two years ago killed uh, rapid transit in Macomb County. It's all bad. Our roads are a mess. Our county commission does absolutely positively nothing, but every single level of government has failed us. Much talk here about mass transit and a new regional transit plan now in the works. Wayne, Oakland, and Washtenaw counties working together, but Macomb is sitting this one out. As a longtime Macomb resident, I'm very disappointed that we wouldn't be a part of that. It's harder for our region to attract mass employers if we don't have a way for people to get to work. I know in the Amazon bid, that was one of the big feedback that we got, was that we don't even have a regional transit system, so how would they expect workers to come to and from their jobs? Well, of course, because the people that are fine, they can afford automobiles, the insurance that it costs here and everything else, they're good. But well, what about the person that's trying to travel around the county to get from one job to the second to the third? And my daughter will never drive, and so her choice is when she graduates from college and she's going to uh, a college in Detroit, is some city that has mass transportation. And it's not going to be around here. When the kids are coming back, they're not moving to Warren. They're going to Ferndale. They're going to Royal Oak because Warren is boring. The decisions that are being made are being made for a generation that may have antiquated thinking versus a generation that may be <coughs> up and coming and so that's the generation that's actually going to move the conversation forward. And we don't have those type of dialogue. People in Macomb County feel very left behind. Like we have the GM plant that just closed over at Nine and Mound. We have uh, wages that have been stagnant since the 1970s. And when you have like such a scarcity of resources, it's really easy to stoke fear in the traditional Southern strategy way where you're pitting working class white people against working class people of color. And it works really well here, unfortunately. No one ever breaks party line anymore. So who represents the rest of us who got an I behind our name? You know, where, where are we at? Because no one's representing it. They're not even listening to us. If you look at that the tax break of 2017, a whole share of it went to business because they were going to create jobs and they were going to increase the economy. And that, oh, good reason. I like that idea. Except what happened? It's not hurting me because I got a lot of shares of stock and the buybacks pushed my values up, you know, but the bottom line is that's me. There's a lot of other people here who don't have a piece of that pie. All right, let's bring in our one Detroit contributors, Nolan Finley from the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson from American Black Journal. Hey, guys. Um, Nolan, I'm going to start with you. We were at this conversation right. in Warren. What new did you hear coming out of there or what surprised you, I guess? Well, I guess I was surprised by the uh, way the way the folks there observed or viewed where we are as a nation in terms of our economy and our progress and our growth. I mean, it was a very pessimistic mood in that room, even though they live in Macomb County, which has bounced back in terms of their housing market, their job market, uh, personal incomes are growing. People don't feel it, or at least. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize it. And that's a lot of the concern that we've been talking about for a while, that even though it seems when people talk about the stock market doing well, and we even heard one gentleman talking, well, I got some good returns there. But the, the mood was very different. And so, Stephen, what do you think that that is going to translate to in these next couple of months here and going into 2020? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that this is going to be an election about economic anxiety. I'm not certain that that's going to define yeah. next year's campaign. But I do think that it's true that in places like Macomb County, especially in the southern part of Macomb County, what people are experiencing is not joblessness, but it's wage suppression. It's that they can't keep up with the increasing costs and demands of sending kids to college and the things that get you ahead with the salaries that they're making. There are also people who tend to work more than one job just to make 
their lives possible. And so that kind of economic anxiety has been with us for a while, especially in Michigan. Governor Snyder talked about that and when he was running for his second term, that not enough people were feeling the effects of the things that he did to, to expand the economy. I think that's still with us. And that's what makes Macomb County so interesting, Nolan, because you talk about when we were in the southern end of the county, and which could be a very different story sure. when you go when you go north in Macomb. Yeah, it's a more blue collar tends to run more Democrat down in Warren where where we were. But I mean when you when you take a look at and what's on paper? When you look at the job numbers, uh, it's, the employment is, is growing there. I, I think tend to disagree about people working two jobs. That's remained fairly consistent, about 5% of the population. But, you know, they seem wore down by the cost of college, by the cost of health care. You kept hearing that. They're angry as hell about the roads, and mm -hmm. you would expect that. We drove out there, yeah. and the roads are terrible. And Mark Hackle keeps talking about how terrible the roads are. But you know, these are people who have who continue to vote for change, and nothing much changes in their mind for the better. I mean, they go, they make radically different choices in election cycles, but their motivation is always the same: we want change, and nothing seems to change they also, in the right direction. Yeah, they also are now witness in a more prolific way to the ways that life is changing for people who are just a little wealthier than they are. I mean, uh, if you move just a little bit up the economic scale, that's where you've seen a lot of growth uh, of people uh, in terms of their wages, in terms of their investments and things like that. And the folks who are stuck in these uh, sort of blue collar jobs where wages are not going up, uh, where security is less uh, stable than it used to be, they're, they live very close to those folks. They see this on television and on social media, and it becomes frustrating. It becomes this question of, when am I going to get my chance to move ahead? Right, so we're going to be covering, obviously, Michigan over this next year in our election 2020 initiative, and we'll spend more time in Macomb County and also in Oakland County and Wayne County, have a lot of more of these community conversations. But big picture-wise, do you expect to hear some of the similar stories in the other counties or so? And, and again, Michigan's larger national message of what's most important to them in this presidential election. Well, it'll be, that's what will be interesting to see as we go to different places in the county, how different groups of people perceive where we're at as a nation. I tend to agree with Steve. I don't think this is going to be an economic um, election. I think for the most part, people are, Character you know, election. people are recognizing that the economy is strong and it's gotten better. This is about leadership and character. It has been from day one, which is why I don't understand how the Democratic candidates keep talking about things other than that. They keep bad-mouthing the economy, they keep trying to convince people, you know, oh, we're, we're in a horrible condition in terms of an economy, when the real issue is leadership. That's what's on people's minds. So do you think you're going to see a message switch then in the next couple of months when we expect to see a lot of Democratic presidential candidates come here to Michigan because the primaries in March? Yeah. Well, I, I think the, the message here will be a combination of economics and character. I mean, you're going to talk about health care when you come to Michigan. You're going to talk about jobs mostly because of the, the auto industry. And the auto industry is losing jobs right now. I mean, they are closing plants, laying workers off. Democrats would be crazy not to focus on that when they come here. But I do think that in November, the, the question is, what kind of person do you want to be the president of the United States? That is the thing that I think is going to motivate people to get to the polls, and the Democrats have got to pick somebody who uh, who people prefer over Donald Trump. That's a pretty low bar, you would think, but uh, Not they do seem to. I mean, if they take, when there's which, ten of them, that yeah. it is hard. But when if you look one on one, and they start looking at actual policy, some of these folks scare people with their policy. I think the entry of Mike Bloomberg into the race changes the conversation a bit because he's running at least early. You look at his campaign ads. He's not running on, oh my God, the economy, the things are miserable here, things are so bad. He's running a leadership campaign. Well, we're going to continue to have these conversations over the next year and, and coming to the coffee shops and the restaurants near you. All right. Thanks, Nolan.